In the rise of Iranian new wave cinema, there have been a number of film school graduates in Iran and each year more than 20 new directors make their debut films. Many of them are women. Hi, my name is Sabrina and today I will be highlighting the filmmakers of Iran and their impact on socio-political issues. Shirin Ashat is an Iranian artist known for her work in photography and film. As an exile living in New York, Shirin Ashat has become an icon of contemporary Iran over the past 20 years. Her dual perspective has given Western art its most compelling response to the ideological war between Islam and the secular world that has come to dominate our decade. It was Nishat who introduced the notion of Islamic feminist work to the West, hinting at the resilience and determination of Iranian women that exists beneath the hijab. Shirin Nishat has directed a number of films, two of which are feature length, while the rest are short films and or video installations. I will be taking a look at Nishat's work on Women Without Men in 2009, and a short film, Rapture, in 1999. In Women Without Men, we follow four women living in Iran. These women have their similarities, but live very different lives, each ranging from financial and social class. The film opens with Muniz, listening to the news on the radio. Muniz is a young woman determined to try and change the fate of her country. She is worried about the political change and how it can affect the people of Iran. Next, we follow Zarin, a sex worker living in poverty. Zarin's story is much more spiritual because most of her journey comes with trying to find meaning in her life. Zarin seeks refuge in a hidden garden where she finds her liberty. Besides that, we have Faizeh, who is similar to Zarin in a way. She is still trying to figure out what she wants. Her conflict seems more personal. She doesn't know if she wants to follow the traditional methods of what is expected of a woman, to marry and live with a man who can provide for her. Faizeh also finds herself in the garden, where she feels sexually liberated when she is able to admire her naked body. Lastly, we follow Fakri who among the rest of the women has her own money. She leaves her husband and buys a house in the middle of the woods. This is where the garden is located. It is also where she meets and provides shelter for Faizeh and Zarin. Lastly, Shirin Ashat tends to explore contrasting and meta ideas. In her video installation, Rapture, we see a group of men on the left and on the right, a group of women. The split screen in black and white plus the use of sound in the film is quite interesting. The men are set in a more constructed and architectural environment typically exhibiting chaos, while the women are in a natural and earthy setting. They are seen chanting and praying. This installation raises many questions of segregation and self-reflection. What is Nishat trying to convey? On the surface, it is a basic representation of men's absurd and wildlike nature in contrast to women, who are more centered and at peace. But underneath, it seems to tie in perfectly with the pattern we see throughout history. War and patriarchy were all created by men, while women sit back in silence, unable to break out of the peaceful box that they were put in. It explores systemic sexism and double standards. Nishat's approach to films typically revolves around realism, or magical realism. What is magical realism? It may sound like an oxymoron. Magical realism is defined as a style of fiction that points a realistic view of the modern world, while also adding magical elements. As a response to realism, magical realism was introduced in the early 20th century. German art critic Franz Rowe was the one who coined the term. This literary genre grew in popularity in 1950s Latin America. The way Nishat incorporates magical realism into her films is quite haunting. Magical realism in films can sometimes be recognized as a version of escapism. This is shown in a scene from Women Without Men when Faizé is raped in the woods as she watches herself run away to escape the pain. Like many filmmakers, Shirin Nishat's work reflect what she knows as an individual. After being banned from Iran in 1996, Nishat had a shift in her work, speaking on Islamic feminism and socio-political issues involving Iran 
What makes her work intriguing is its deafening silence within her films and photography. In a screening of Women Without Men at the Walker Art Center during a Q&A, she states that many Iranians don't remember what the social environment was before the Islamic Revolution in 1978. Women Without Men was of course a period film, based in 1953 during the Iranian coup d'etat, which was to overthrow the democratically elected Prime Minister Mossadegh in favor of strengthening the monarchical rule of the Shah, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. It was the beginning of the antagonism between Iran and the US. It was the groundwork for Islamic Revolution. Shirin Nashat has had her fair share of criticism over the years by not only Iranians, but also Arabs and Americans. Having not lived in Iran for many years now, she doesn't quite identify with the culture there as much as she used to. But that doesn't stop her from sharing her beliefs. As a woman of color in the arts industry, she has a very big voice and she knows exactly what she wants to say.